I'm just gonna start this video out by waving. I'm not even gonna say anything. Oops, I actually, I said something. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I love bad movies. If you're not familiar and you're new, hi, welcome. I've made a bunch of videos on bad movies and it's been a year since I've made one. To be honest, I am very picky about what movies are so bad it's good. There's this very specific area that a bad movie needs to fall into. I call it the Eddie zone. It's very hard to find, but once you do, wow. <laughs> and I genuinely thought there are no more bad movies that will fall into the Eddie zone. I've looked for over a year and none of them fell into it until one very important day in my life. Uh, it was toward the beginning of quarantine. My girlfriend and I had watched Spy Kids 1 and Spy Kids 2 in one sitting for no reason. And then at the very end of that, we thought, let's queue up another movie about spies and kids. And Amazon suggested a movie from 2000 called Spy High. I don't know why we watched this movie, but it is one of the greatest bad movies I've ever seen. And it doesn't make any fucking sense. And so I am so overjoyed to present to you Spy High. We're starting off with the most 2000s logo I've ever seen in my life. Starring Pete Jefferson, Holly Town, Thad Luckinbill, Toby Rolt, Sammy Corvey, and Twister. That's right, Twister. There's a dog named Twister in this movie, and they did the and feature like he's the most exciting role in the entire movie. And they're fucking right. So we start off with a clear science nerd trying to do science nerd computer things. And this doesn't really matter at all. He gets chased by uh, some soldiers. And then outside when he gets caught, oh no, it's evil British businessman. Come, coming here to do some evil British business. Also, the music is so loud compared to the dialogue in some of these scenes. It's not me, it's not my doing. This is the movie's original audio that I have not <laughs> edited at all. What's a joy? Now I am gonna have some fun. <laughs> Can you imagine getting caught by a villain and the music is too loud? What? I can't, I'm sorry, what I can't hear. So now we join our brain dead main character, Andrew. Now, the main thing that I need to share about this movie is that whoever wrote it was in the year 2000 and must have just heard about computers and just thought, oh, I kind of get the gist of what they can do. And then they just make up a ton of shit that doesn't even exist. Hello, Valerie, are you home? I hope, I hope. You have a call, Valerie. Who is it? Andrew. Hello, Andrew, aren't you supposed to be in bed or something? <laughs> no, I just had to talk to you before I went to sleep. <laughs> well, it's nice to know that I'm so important to you. Yeah, I really like our little chats. I wonder what we'd say if we met for real sometime. Um, so they are doing a Zoom call in 2000 with good audio and good video, and I just wanted to mention that. Is that a new office that looks different? New job, and are you gonna like it? Me, why? What is it? I'm a new game designer at KL Interactive. Wow, right on. And I'm sure I can use some of your expert help. You really think I'm an expert? <laughs> no, no, Andrew. She was joking. Also, what's going on here? He's in high school, and she's got a job with an office? How old is she? Listen, I've got a demo of the game. I'd like to send it to you, and maybe you can take a look at it for me. You bet. Uh, but I can't tonight. I'm dead if I don't finish this report. Oh, yes, high school. Well, maybe I'll send it to you later. Bye for now. See you later, alligator. Oh, God. Oh, God, that's so bad. <laughs> also, she's in college, or at least past high school. 
So what's going on there? They're just they're they're e dating, and he's in high school. Yes. Barry, you are the best. Uh, first off, Andrew style, impeccable dude. Way to go. Also, S Valerie sent him his, sorry, Valerie, his college girlfriend while he's in high school, sent him a video game overnight. And I don't know how much people sent each other games and you download a transmission in 2000, but I'm pretty sure that wasn't a thing. <laughs> Oops. Thanks, Rocky. Okay, here is Rocky in the movie. Rocky is portrayed by Twister, the acting dog. And Twister is amazing. And we can't allow anything to happen to Twister because he's the best. So after speaking to his mom, before talking to his dad, Andrew, um, how do I put this lightly? Uh, Andrew has a conversation with his dog. Rocky, you know you're not allowed on campus. Wolf back. You know perfectly well they had to redo the entire cafeteria after a little incident. Yes, I know you were framed, but you know the rules. Stay out of trouble. I'll see you after school. After communicating with his dog, Andrew goes over to his dad, and his dad is like weirdly into mailboxes. Have you ever seen a more marvelous mailbox? I don't know why they thought this would be like a fun thing to add about the dad. The dad doesn't matter to the story at all. Then Andrew does this super sick wheelie and nobody talks about it. There's not a round of applause. There's a lot of super cool bike tricks in this movie and nobody stops to acknowledge it. So Andrew goes to school and he runs into some bullies, doesn't matter at all. Oops. Did I bump into you? And then he goes to his classroom where he is late to turn in his term paper. They just use this scene to show that his friend Gary is a real class clown, but the writing's bad, so he's not funny at all. I especially like the mustard stain on the front cover. Nice touch. <laughs> that's not just any mustard, that's gourmet mustard. <laughs> Only the best for you, sir. So when they're having lunch, Andrew is being asked by his friends why he doesn't care about his grades, and this is his answer. What about getting into a good school? I'm just thinking about going right into the private sector. I already have a consulting job with Kale Interactive. Kale Interactive, that's one of the top think tanks in the world. Yep. I bet I know how he got the job, too. How? Through his online girlfriend. Online girlfriend? Do I know her? Doubtful. She's an older woman, college girl. Your basic game designer, supermodel type. So let me get this straight. Andrew's a college girlfriend who is an adult and he is a child and they're dating, sent him a video game that she's working on at a major company. And he thought, oh, my college girlfriend's got me hooked up. I'm just not gonna get a degree in computer science or anything having to do with this company. And my college girlfriend will get me a job. <laughs> Very smart, Andrew. We already have an incredibly intelligent main character. <laughs> so then we uh, cut to Andrew's college girlfriend who's in college and she's an adult and he's a child. And this is where she makes video games. In this room, this is what an adult in the 2000s thought a video game development office looked like. So then uh, evil British businessman is just really creepy. You startled me. Sorry. I love what you're doing with the game. It's so lifelike, so real. And she asks him, don't you ever play your own games? And he essentially says, no, I'm on to bigger games. I'm gonna spoil it for you right now. By bigger games, he means war. I got hooked on video games, but then my brain started to get bored. So I thought I'd try war out for a change. This is the 2000s mindset of video games will rot your brain, where your 10 year old Timmy is playing Doom, and then one day he's gonna be like, this isn't enough. I need to go to Vietnam. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, insane future type things that happen in this. Like uh, Andrew has this weird headset that is face tracking his face and changing his voice so he looks like he's talking as his dog Rocky. After showing off the non-existent face tracking technology, they decide they want to play the game that Andrew's girlfriend sent him, Mind Chaser. Or maybe not. Ah! 
Yeah, but the game keeps crashing at the same point, right when it gets good. Can you fix it? I don't know. My computer's just not strong enough to handle it. Valerie, hi, how you doing? Andrew here. Um, listen, Mind Chaser is a great game. I'm loving it. But I can't seem to get past the problems with it. Uh, I don't think my system's strong enough to handle it. And what I think I need is access to a really, really hot mainframe. I was wondering if you could do it. So he likes the game, but there are too many problems with it. So he needs to be connected to a hot mainframe. That doesn't mean anything. And also, what does that mean? What was with the 2000s and hacking mainframes? I don't understand why that was such a common thing that people got wrong. Imagine you have a bug in Fortnite and you call Epic Games to connect you to a really hot mainframe. Hey, all right, Valerie did it. Did what? She tied us into a government computer. Please decipher and return. Thank you. We have a code one violation. Some entity is trying to hack our computer. We have a problem. Yes, Jackson. The code one on our mainframe, that's impossible. To access this game, they were given a government mainframe to access. And so now the government has been notified that their mainframe has been accessed. Even if this were real, accessing a government mainframe, what are they gonna stumble upon some spy secrets? The movie is called Spy High. Maybe they're gonna expose some information and start a life of espionage? No, they do this. Let's take this thing for a ride. All right, look who came to play. Let me show you what a woman can do. Andrew, crank the music. Gentlemen, to the window. What is this? So they're on their computer, and then outside of the house, there's a laser show happening. So what is going on? They wrote in the script, and then a laser show happens? Where's the connection? Where are the lasers coming from? So the next day, they're riding their bikes, and the government agent that picked up the phone tracks them down and goes into Andrew's kitchen. He's saying they're gonna go to jail for, you know, having a laser light show, and they tell him the dangers of KL Interactive. We think Andrew's friend has been kidnapped by KL Interactive. Yeah, kidnapped. Uh-huh. We think they're developing a dangerous computer game. A death game. Uh-huh. But then the agent says, I know they're evil. Your college girlfriend is a CIA agent, and she's been kidnapped. I have to ask, was dating a teenager part of any of it for her? Or was she just doing that on the side? I need a team to rescue her. I need you. Why us? Because KL Interactive is closed down as tight as a drum. I can't get an agent inside. They're so tied into the military industrial complex that they know who all my agents are. This guy thinks there's corrupted agents and he looks at these teenagers and thinks, so I guess I'm gonna train you as spies and you guys are gonna be spies now, instead of going to jail from 10 seconds ago. And that's what that scene is. That's what they decide. And they just start training. They do karate, they do pull-ups. Keep in mind, they didn't do anything to like hack a government mainframe. They were just given a game by Andrew's college girlfriend. So I guess the message of this movie so far is if you wanna be a spy, date an adult when you're a child. <laughs> hey guys, it's me, Eddie, you know from the video, I, I shouldn't have said that. So, I'm sorry. So while hatching their master plan, this happens. Cool TV. It's a holographic screen. I've read about these, but I never knew they really existed. So, Gary is so dumb that he saw a hologram in person in the year 2000 for the first time and he said, Cool TV, <laughs> you fucking moron, dude. It's a hologram. Their first attempt to get into KL Interactive is so wildly uneventful. They go there, they fail, and they skateboard away. <laughs> After that, evil man imprisons a college girlfriend, and he pretty much says that the video game he's building isn't a video game. It's a weapon for war.
And it, the video game looks like this. Now the security guards know what they look like, so of course they need to steal a key card from one of the employees. The plan. Gary will hide in a pinball machine at the beach, and the scientist from the evil science company will be licking an ice cream cone and want to play pinball at the beach. And so when he's obviously doing that, he'll lean forward, and that's when... <laughs> and that's when Rocky the dog leaps onto his back, pushes his chest into the pinball machine, Gary grabs it and pulls it down and scans his car. And all those things had to go right, and they did because Rocky did his fucking job. For the rescue mission for Andrew's girlfriend, they have a perfect AR scan of the building and they walk around in a real space with it in the year 2000. And then the climax of the movie has a complicated plan, but essentially Andrew goes in the vents to steal the game. Gary uses face morphing technology to become the scientist to rescue Andrew's girlfriend. And it all looks like it's gonna work out until evil British businessman pulls a gun. I'd like to thank everyone for coming to this memorial service today. Uh, Twister, uh, who, is, who is acting as Rocky in the movie, uh, as you guys have seen, has been shot. Let's remember him for the things that he did good in this world. Like when he gave Andrew his homework. Or when he jumped on that guy. Or when Andrew's mom tossed him a treat and his little paws slipped on the wood as he was running away. These are the things that we should remember about Twister. And yes, I say Twister because they shot the real dog in real life. I'm certain of it, it looked so real. The cyber suit is bulletproof. Oh, he's alive. Oh. <laughs> Okay, he's alive. It was a bulletproof vest. So the day is saved. Andrew, Gary, and Catherine go back to playing Mind Chaser. And at the very end, this happens. Andrew, Catherine, Gary, and Rocky. I have a mission for you. If you choose to accept it. <laughs> Wow, what an exhilarating film. I can't wait to see Andrew, Catherine, and Gary do more spy missions in this incredible franchise. They never made another one? They stopped making them? Because they weren't, uh, it, it wasn't good? Oh my god, I just got connected to the uh, a government mainframe. Wow, look at this hologram. Thank you for watching my video. I'm gonna go spend some time Messing around, whoa! Raycon, sponsoring me again. Thank you, Raycon. Unfortunately, like I told you guys last time, Ray J died. He came back as a ghost and we're roommates now. Um, he doesn't do the dishes at all. And it really pisses me off, I gotta say. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But Ray J, you, you have more to tell me? Raycon earbuds started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbud on the market. They sound just as amazing as other top audio brands that you know. Raycon's newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are the best ones yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Ray J, cool, but do the dishes though. I'm sorry for yelling, but like, do the, do the dishes, do the dishes. Raycon has a 45 day return policy, so you can make sure they're the pair of wireless earbuds for you. Click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order. Go to buyraycon.com slash Eddie for 15% off your order. Brought to you by Raycon, the link is in the description. Do the dishes.